we're live. Hello again. It's episode five of The Dead of Winter. And uh, welcome, welcome. This is me, Mike Mason from Coliseum. I'm joined by uh, Lynn, who's playing Francis Ball, uh, Gemma, who's playing Georgina Sullivan, Becky, who's playing Eleanor Wright, and Jason, who's playing Maxime Elliott. Hello and welcome all. Hello. Okay, so here we go. Right, so last time, uh, lots of things happened, didn't they? According yes. to my notes, yes. <laughs> yes, and uh, <laughs> Becky, you're going to do the update tonight, so uh, over to you. Okay, so we went on a tour of, um, where are we? Is it Leningrad? Leningrad. Yes, we went on a tour of there, and we know all about the city now, including what it's called. It was a start in the morning. We had a tour to the Peter and Paul Fortress across the, the, the what I've written is across the Never on the Equality Bridge. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Hurry on. <laughs> anyway, uh, then through the southwest side of the city, past the Cathedral of the Trinity, and onto the stunning exhibit of a rubber factory that we all paid no attention to and didn't go inside, but it was during that uh, moment of not going inside that we discovered we had been followed by two men of the Secret Service. And when I say we, I actually wasn't there. I was back in the hotel, being all, I refuse to go to a rubber factory, I'm going to write my book. And the concierge came up to me and tipped me off that the Secret Service had men outside our hotel as well, and they were planning to invade our rooms. So I stole all of my colleagues stuff and piled it into my room so the Secret Service couldn't get it. I had it instead. And, um, and then uh, I believe Francis and Georgina led the Secret Service astray so Maxime could go and visit an old family friend who has, I gather, been added to his entourage now. <laughs> so we then went to our uh, new hotel room. We, we got a new, new rooms um, that the Secret Service hopefully don't know about. And uh, then in the evening, we went to meet Golivin at the chess club. And um, I believe Maxime had a game against some young chess protege and was duly thrashed. Uh, but on the way there, Francis was accosted uh, by this uh, rather odd character. In fact, I'm still not decided in my mind as to whether this character was some kind of ghost or not. You know, one of these dead people coming at us or not. But um, nonetheless, uh, he was, uh, yes, because he faded and disappeared, didn't he? He faded he out of existence, yeah. Which which has left me somewhat confused. He was kind of um, quite angry and injured, if you remember. Uh, yes. And, uh, was, uh, was seemed to know you all which was a little odd. Yes, yeah, so I expect we'll get more information on that soon and it'll all click into place at the end and we'll go, oh, we did that wrong. <laughs> In the meantime, <laughs> we had our meeting with Golovin and we got some bits of information. Uh, speaking with Golovin, it, it seems, never quite gives you the, the full story. You get fragments of, of data that don't really make sense. For example, I know Krylov lives at room 500, which is the, the second house of the Soviets, Theatre Square, Moscow. I don't know why I need to know this, but apparently Krylov is an evil man who intends to get all the power for himself, but he doesn't have an answer. What does that even mean? I don't know. We've got to go to Golivan today and get whatever this answer is. Um, he did, however, let us know that this big nasty beastie that has been raising the dead people so that we could talk to them is called Hubor, who is a beautiful and awful godlike creature. Um, and there's, there's uh, somebody called Gottman who found this creature who knows the number. Well, I don't know what that means, but apparently he knows the answer. Um, and Golivin, sorry, he, Gottman knows the number, Golivin has the answer. What these things are, I think we're going to find out at least one of them tonight. Um, then we went down for dinner and met the ballerina friends that had been chasing after Maxime. And uh, 
one of them, Oksana, I believe her name was, uh, was very outspoken about the regime. And the secret police, we noticed, were following us again, and we thought they were after us, but actually they were after Oksana. Um, we, uh, when we, well, we tried to accost the Secret Service when they realised we were involved and it seems the Secret Service have some kind of standing order to observe us but not interact with us. And so they backed off. That enabled us to get Oksana out of there. And now she and her friend, whose name I forget, are coming with us as well and have also been added to Maxime's entourage. And that's where my notes end. So if anything else happened in that session, unfortunately, I forgot to write it down and therefore it didn't happen. <laughs> Very good. Very good. So yes, it is um, your third day in Leningrad. Um, you are going to be leaving tomorrow for Moscow on the next stage of your tour. Uh, it is the 3rd of November, 1929. And it is morning. Uh, actually, before um, breakfast, um, uh, let's say, uh, Francis, here's a knock on their hotel door. Um, <sighs> knife in pocket, obviously. Um, are I you, will oh, go sorry, over. Are you, in the new room, are you sharing with Maxime or are you separate? I thought we were. Yeah, yeah, I thought we, we were, were sharing. So, yeah, we sorry, only got yeah, two so rooms. Maxime and Francis, uh, your, your hotel door. And this is on the new, the new room. Yes, okay. So I will go over to the door. I will stand side on, hand in pocket on the knife, open the door and go, hello. Uh, before you stand, your tour guide, uh, Popov, who stands there smiling and saying, ah, Mr. Ball, uh, I, uh, I discover you changed your room uh, 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 and uh, with uh, Mr. Elliot. Yes, correct? Well, and the evidence of your own eyes would, uh, well, the evidence of your own eyes would tell you that I've changed rooms, yes. Uh, Told well, you. I I, 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 it is my duty to be informed of where all our guests are to ensure their safety and their well-being. I, uh, I am just purely checking this morning that the new room is to your satisfaction and that all is well. Yes, it is. Thank you. And all the time I'm thinking, right, we're going to have to go back down to the other one now. <laughs> I don't trust Popov at all. <laughs> You know, well, very good. Well, I will. Uh, I will no doubt see you at breakfast, and I'm sure you are. Uh, I'm sure you are very enthused with the idea of touring the Palace of Arts this morning. Yes. yes, actually, I'm looking forward to that. Thank you. I will see that. I will be doing the guided tour myself. I have many interesting facts to tell oh, you. God, is he the boring one? Yeah. Yes. Ah. <laughs> oh. Um. I will. I will fake a smile. <laughs> Okay. That's lovely. Utterly convincing. And uh, okay, uh, presumably you kind of gently shut the door on his face, and he uh, yeah. disappears off. Um, and, uh, and then you are free to uh, uh, take breakfast uh, uh, and whatever. Um, yes, indeed. The the itinerary today is uh, this morning is a, uh, a tour of the Palace of Arts within the former Winter Palace, um, and. Um, and we'll end with a look around the Revolutionary Museum, which all sounds very uh, interesting. Um, uh, this evening, um, uh, you have uh, on the itinerary, um, uh, when I find it, is uh, uh, an organized trip to the symphony, if you uh, wish to do that. Um, obviously on your um, non-tour itinerary, you have a 6 p.m. meeting uh, with Golovin again, but this time, at his house, um, uh, which he gave you the address of last time. Um, so that's your itinerary today. Um, is anyone doing anything different than the tour this morning? I've been waiting all, all our days to actually get some art and culture rather than rubber factories. So I am, I'm gonna get on this tour and enjoy the art the last thing I do, and probably will be. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think at breakfast, like we ought to discuss whether we're going to have somebody look after our belongings, or whether we should just move it to another hotel for the day. 
might be a bit obvious <laughs> if they see us trooping out with our suitcases. Mm. Well, we could disappear out the back with the suitcases or something. Just I think, did them. you make use of the hotel safe for anything particularly we bad? We didn't, actually. I think we probably should put essentials in the hotel safe, like paperwork and things. I mean, not necessarily it's going to be any safer than leaving it in the room, but... Also, part of me has a funny feeling that Popoff is already aware of that back entrance. Mm. Oh, yes. Because yes, he seems well, to know I don't everything. actually have much that's desperately valuable, um, but passports and things, although they've probably already taken copies of those. Yeah, I mean, you, you're probably keeping your travel visa on you, because I think you've been yes. advised to obviously keep that in case, you know, a thing's happening. But other than that, yeah, everything else you could pop in the safe, I guess, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Even uh, you will sort us out. He's a good lad, so long as you give him many rubles. We've, we've given him quite a lot of rubles. I'm sure we could like, spare for a few more. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, if you if you do have a chat with him, you know, before or after breakfast, uh, he will, uh, you know, continue with his vigil um, uh, uh, yeah. for you. Um, pleased to do so with the extra little tip he gets and um, seems, you know, very genuine, you know, in helping you out. And uh, and he does, I think he probably will say to one of you, he's very sorry about Popov. Uh, Popov asked too many questions and, and uh, he couldn't uh, delay him finding out that you had changed rooms any longer. Um, I completely understand. Uh, Again, he's anyway. a spy, isn't he? Definitely. <laughs> oh, it's too helpful. I'm suspicious now. <laughs> well, he seems a bit too obvious to be a spy. He he is very strictly asking questions all the time. Surely it's more of a double bluff. <sighs> Maybe he's just so overt he's covert. <laughs> <laughs> or perhaps he's just a not very good spy. Is that too? I mean, we've not really got anything to hide other than two ballerinas and a, a family retainer. <laughs> and the reasons why we're here. Which I'm fairly certain most of the Russians know about already anyway. Yes. They don't and really do. They read the letters. It's yes. true. Well, um, breakfast is, is uh, uh, nice and uh, you're soon out into the um, the mildly cold winds of Leningrad uh, on your way to the Palace of Art in the uh, the Winter Palace, um, which was built in uh, 1754 to 62, says Popov, um, and uh, says one of the richest and most famous museums in the world. The collections are displayed in a series of halls and galleries, which placed end to end would measure over four kilometres in length and other you know, astute observations continue all morning. Is this the one it with does the amber paintings. room? It does hold paintings. Say again? Is this the one with the amber room? Quite possibly. It certainly holds paintings by Western European artists, um, antiquities, city and antiquities, oriental collection and applied arts. Um, and you find various French and Dutch, uh, the, the French and Dutch collections particularly good. Um, and it's quite a, it is genuinely a, you know an interesting morning for those of you that you know have a taste for art and culture uh, the tour ends perhaps not so much on a high note um going through the esoteric uh, or which could be described as dispiriting or maybe even uh, uh depressing uh, revolutionary museum in the southwest of the palace that documents the revolutionary movements in russia over the last three centuries um and the life of prisoners in exile before 1917 and um uh, it's a little it's a little bit more downbeat um however um thereafter um prior to lunch uh, you have a bit of a uh, a free time to wander around the winter palace and the surrounding streets um before the tour kind of picks up again and starts to uh, look around another section of leningrad you've not yet seen um Presumably, you know, you go and get a cup of tea somewhere or a coffee. And keeping um, an eye out for our little friends, yes. And um, I'm also going to keep an eye out for attractive young ladies and steer Maxine past any um, <laughs> places that look I, I, like 
<laughs> I need to put my occupation as I have a wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Honestly. your fault. They no. just latch on to you. <laughs> well, well, While say. you are, um, you know, wandering out on lunch, um, can I ask for a spot hidden roll, please? Ooh. Dun, dun, dun. What is spot hidden these days? Again? Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh, no. oh, hello. Yay. Yep. That would be an extreme success. Ooh. I have a good success. Okay. Uh, Maxim and Eleanor are too busy looking at the tea shop or whatever. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, yeah. uh, I, I was having a lovely conversation uh, about this shade of red. I, indeed. <laughs> indeed. Um, well, um, Francis uh, and Eugenie, you spot a couple of your um, Russian Secret Service tails who are uh, kind of wander it down the street, clearly keeping an eye on you. Um, you notice um, these are a couple um, that you saw the other day, not yesterday, but the, the day before that. Um, and uh, Francis, with your extreme success, you there's something about their demeanour that's a little different. I don't know it, whether it's kind of a look of boredom in their eyes or something. You just get a sense that, I don't know, there's something, there's something even more shifty about this pair today mm -hmm. than, than before. Um, and you notice um, that they kind of aren't, they aren't keeping their distance as much as before. They are closer. You know, they're not right up against you, mm -hmm. but they are closer than they have been at all times. Um, whether they're just, you know, aware that they're being noticed and don't care, or whether they're intentionally kind of being a bit more intimidating, that could also be true. But certainly you get the sense of uh, those things. Um, as I say, you're out in the middle of Leningrad, the kind of you know a, a maze-like network of streets you you can you know carry on you know disregard them as normal uh, but if you did want to try and lose them you know it's possible if it depends on how you how you want to play it oh well i i think actually i shall just wave politely <laughs> at them and smile because i know i have a miss sullivan who can kick the, the bejeebas out of their shins should she feel the need <laughs> I did rather take them by surprise. You did a bit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> my reputation may have preceded me by now. They tell you for about half an hour, and as you're kind of wandering a little bit blindly around, trying to maybe find your way back to where the you know you're supposed to meet everyone else up, um, you come into a more uh, a bit more of a deserted street, and at that point, as you kind of enter the street, you hear. You hear one of them cry, Stoy, stop. And um, do you stop? Oh, I sh can't I just pretend I don't understand Russian? Yeah, well, yeah let's go with that. <laughs> Someone's yelling something, meh. Yeah, oh, Maximum, I... so you, you can tell it's what they're saying is in stop. So it's up to you whether you want to kind of say anything or not, um, you know. Becky, uh, what, what's Elena doing? As I've been completely unaware of them until this point, um, I, when I see them, I, 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 I've, I've had something in mind, you see, when I saw them next. I was like, aha, there you are. I've been wondering where you were, and I start walking up to them. Excellent. <laughs> um, Maxine, okay. what, are, what, are you, what are you doing then? I, I'm... I'm sort of maybe caught in the middle a little bit. I have also not noticed them at all until now. Um, I'm a little concerned that Ellen is just marching straight up to them, but mm -hmm. I'm going to maybe keep keep nearby just in case they try and grab her yeah. or, you know. Yeah, like I, th I think as soon as I realise that she's turned around and she's heading back towards them, I think I'm going to have to turn around and keep an eye on the situation. So right, so you're, you're ready you're to go after her just in case. Stop yeah. nearby to Maxim and just yeah. wait and watch. Um, Alan, as you approach, one of the men kind of like adjusts his coat and jacket and you see a gun visible in his waistband. Uh, he's only a few feet away from you. He, he looks at you and uh, says, um, uh, Paspart? 
I holding his hand speaks out. Russian. I, however, do not. I start. I start. I, I don't know what yours. I... He, he looks around. He looks and looks and sort of shouts, shouts the word more loudly across at the rest of you. Maxim, you know he's saying papers. Mm -hmm. Okay, my character does speak reasonably good Russian. I do not. Oh, so I, I had no uh, idea. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah, I forgot your character had a bit of Russian. Okay, so yeah, you understand he's saying papers. Okay, I say, oh hi, and I'll, I'll reach my papers. I keep seeing you around. It's, it must be such a sm small world, really. So anyway, look, there are my papers. So I was thinking, seeing as we keep bumping into each other, and I'll speak in Russian. <laughs> bit more broken than I'm talking right now. Um, seeing as we keep bumping into each other, do you want to come walk with us for a while? But you know, we'll, we'll have to talk, get to know each other. I mean, they um, they take your papers, snap, kind of snatch them out of your hand, and they say nothing to you while you, you know, saying all this to them. They just kind of like you know, look back and forwards at you, and then they kind of push the papers back in your hands and look at the rest of you and go like that. Oh, well, let's not cross another diplomatic incident. So, yes, I shall saunter <laughs> over nonchalantly, like I don't give a chuff, because, you know, they can try it. But um, And then just, you know, politely but disinterestedly hand over my papers. Okay. As he's looking at Francis' papers, the other one stands there um, and kind of... Um, kind of just gestures with his hand like this. They want to bribe, of course they do. Yeah, I'll, I'll spot that and I'll say um, to this guy doing this thing, what then, what do you want? Uh, Maxim, do you have a nice wristwatch? Um, I would imagine I have a pocket watch rather than okay. a wristwatch. Uh, well, they like that. And anyone wearing any jewellery? Nope. No, but I will get my sketch pad out and start drawing them. They don't like that. They no, don't, I... no, neat, neat. They, uh, I'll, I'll show of... them, because I'm still affecting that I don't speak Russian. I've had no real reason to kind of speak Russian. Yes. I'm going to okay. show them what an amazing likeness it is of their friend with just like a couple of swift lines. Okay, um, can I have a dodge roll, Georgina? Yes. Uh, uh, no, did not dodge. Okay. One of them snatches the, the sketch pad out of your hands and tears that page out, throws the sketch pad in your direction so you can catch it, and then just crumples the uh, the piece that you drew, drew on and, and throws it behind them. I'm going to ask him for word. his papers. Oh, how rude. He, uh, he uh, doesn't look very impressed at all. They, uh, they then um, start demanding, clearly, if you, even if you don't speak Russian, they demand money and they demand cigarettes. I'm demanding their papers. They... <laughs> they uh, <laughs> They lean, they lean back and show their guns off again. One kind of puts his hand on the grip of oh, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot they had guns. <laughs> <laughs> Do I but... look impressed? <laughs> Francis certainly does not look impressed. I'm going to so, uh... so, like, waggles his eyebrows at all of you to warn you that these men have got guns. It will be short and it will be nasty. <laughs> I, I... Are you handing anything over? I'm going to pull out my visa again. <laughs> And yeah. I'm going to point to the signature on it. Oh, good thinking, Helen. Okay, um, I would like an intimidate roll then. Hopefully, you're better than me at intimidate. Um, Damn, I can do intimidate. I would very much like it if somebody else did that next time. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want well, to I, can, I can loom menacingly no, no, behind you while uh, you do it. Push the roll there, Becky, do you? I, I was thinking of blowing some. Luck, but it's too late. Is it? No, you can do that. No, you, you, you could blow luck this at this point before you yeah, make this roll if you want to. It's a bit, but I think it's worth it. Um, How much is always, a bit? <laughs> always good to spend as much luck as possible as quickly as possible. Don't listen to him. 29. That you'd have to spend. 
How? Mm. Oh. Whereas a push roll is free. No luck spent. Push roll is, <laughs> is not free. That's a character killing move. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, I, I think when you still got luck, you don't push the roll. That's, that's my philosophy on life. So, uh, I will, I will blow all of that luck to get a pass. Okay. Um, are you, um, are you speaking any Russian at this point? Yes. Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, well, no, I had been speaking Russian up to this you point. You have been. I just kind of but, want to make sure at that point you're saying, you know, Look who signed this in Russian very clearly, mm -hmm. you know, back off kind of thing. Um, with that, um, I just want to know before Eleanor did that, Maxim, did you hand over your pocket watch? Um, I would have got it out and looked at it sentimentally and then given them a scowl, but no, I wouldn't have handed it over. Okay. Okay, so nobody's actually given them anything, yes? Is that right? No, mm -hmm. I gave them a drawing and they screwed it well, up. Well, they didn't like that. That was <laughs> on their list. Of I know, I know they where they've thrown it. We can get it later. Um, okay, well, with Becky uh, basically pulling a kind of an intimidate on them, as in, uh, you know, surely this isn't what you're supposed to be doing, kind of look on, on your face. Uh, they kind of get the message and uh, back off and um, uh, walk away and they disappear off a side street. Um, they certainly acted very differently from any other or even the other time you saw that pair. Mm -hmm. um, so you do get an impression that this, this seems more like an opportunistic move rather than what they're supposed to be doing perhaps. Um, well, I have their pictures, and I'm damn well going to get them fired. I'm I'm going to go over and pick that up for Miss Sullivan because yeah, I yeah, I mean it's it's, it's fine. It. It's just crumpled up, so you, but you can easily uh, you, save it. Yes. Not so rude. Problem. Yes, and to then. the embassy immediately. Yes, I think that sounds like a very mm -hmm. good idea. <laughs> The embassy, is like that. the embassy isn't quite set up in Leningrad yet. It's currently being set up, but doesn't actually kind of exist. Yeah. Oh, so well, I think we words... definitely need to go and complain to Popov and what's his little face. Oh, yeah. yeah good I mean, you can, yeah. uh, you know, you, you, you kind of, you know, walk around indignantly for uh, 10 minutes and find your way back to uh, the square and uh, you can see the other. Uh, 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 members of your tour group uh, kind of filtering back and see pop off and laskin waiting you know with a um with an umbrella or something in the middle of the square um so you have a wonderful opportunity if you wish to speak to pop off or laskin or pop off on his own it's up to you well, i i don't think speaking to pop off is a good idea i mean what are we going to do go out to our tour guide and say i'm sorry the secret police that have been exclusively following us have been a bit rude today <laughs> But they're supposed to be showing off their country in a good light. I'm sure they're going to be absolutely mortified yes. that some of their fellow countrymen have attempted to shake us down. Yep. Very true. And we can easily tell. I mean, we can we don't we don't necessarily have to admit that they're secret service. We could just say two Too men attempted to men. shake us down and they look like yeah. this. <laughs> Yeah, because I didn't, you know, I just, I did, I, I captured them in a few lines. It was not a, a long study, it was a, but it's enough to recognise them. Yeah, let's go and yeah, cause some trouble, but not fess up that we know they were Secret Service. <laughs> okay, so do you, do, you, do you kind of say this to both Laskin and Popov? I would or? say yes. both of them, because I trust yeah. neither of them, so. Yes. Okay, so um, give me the gist of what you say then. Um, most I, dreadful experience. Um, yes, well, the young ladies were were both quite shaken by it. You know, we um, we uh, we were just enjoying a walk around your fair city, and um, these these two ruffians demanded to see our papers, and they were armed. And of course, well, we didn't know who they were, so we thought we'd we'd try and cooperate. And then they tried to shake us down. And they looked like this. They look right. like that. <laughs> he looks fairly stony-faced until you show him the picture. And uh, you can see he's kind of like this 
almost bristles, you know, uh, and, and oh, oh, I, 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 oh, uh, this is bad. This is terrible. Uh, 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 this, this, this. Are you sure this happened? Are you sure you didn't uh, misunderstand? Um, I just took my pocket watch, sir. Uh, do you want to make a psychology roll? Huh, I can try. Nope. Are we, are we all allowed to try and make? Yeah. Psychology? Well, anyone. All right. Okay. Well, in that case, extreme pass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, I got a normal <laughs> success. Okay. Uh, clearly, he is very flustered uh, and he's getting very defensive and uh, making up lies. Uh, he, um, he he basically says, yeah, I'm sure that the, 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 the two men you talk about were, were purely there to ensure your safety, uh, the safety of everyone on the tour. Uh, and I will speak to him in Russian and say, no, they were ruffians who accosted us. Well, they, 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 you, you, you went away from uh, the designated tour area and into, into, into uh, rough streets and they were purely Russia, looking out for your interest. Is Russia not supposed to be a beautiful country that you're showing off to us? Are you saying any side street could have us killed? I'm saying there are dangerous areas in any city, of course, but, the, um, but what, these men were surely just to, to, to look out for you and, and you misunderstood their advance. Um, no, so they were well, deliberately they were showing us their guns and demanding money and jewelry is, um, and, and jewelry and destroying, attempting to destroy um, Miss Sullivan's artwork. Um, yes, yes, I'm. I'm completely sure we misunderstood this. I'm very disappointed, Mr. Popov. I really expected he, better. He kind of <laughs> listens and he goes. He goes all quiet for a moment. It's clearly. He hasn't got a lot of legs to stand on at this point. Uh, he, he basically says, mm, I, I now understand and I, I see what you what you mean. I, I misunderstood what you was telling me. Uh, these men are stupid. They will be disciplined and dealt with severely. I can assure you of this. Oh, thank you. Let us not spoil your day and let us carry on the tour. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, do, do the whole British I'm terribly disappointed routine works every time. <laughs> it's just crushing. Uh, <laughs> and uh, the you know, you get next people gather for the next five minutes and then you're off again having a wander. Uh, during the wander, as Popov sat in front with his umbrella leading things on and shouting out, you know, look at the wonderful glories of the Soviet Union. Um, Laskin, who kind of takes up the rear of the group normally, just to make sure no stragglers disappear, um, comes alongside um, and sort of says, "I'm very sorry. Uh, I, I hope I, you know, I, I, I heard what you were saying, uh, and um, pop off can be a, a little uh, difficult at times. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very sorry. The, the men." The men who were, f were following you were OGPU, and they, they are not meant to they are not meant to uh, rob or accost you. It is it is, it is un unnecessary, and, and they will be dealt with. I can assure you. Um, I am nice. I am genuinely very sorry, and hope this doesn't you know ruin your your experiences of, of beautiful it would Leningrad. Be nicer still if the OGPU weren't following us everywhere. <laughs> Uh, it is it is it is the state we live in they they are they are they are genuinely here to to for your safety well thank you mr laskin we appreciate that but uh, yes it, it might be suggested to them quite firmly that uh, your tourists are not people to be robbed indeed indeed if there's anything i can do please don't hesitate to ask Ooh, that's a good favour to be owed. Slips, slips back uh, to the back of the, uh, the mm. tour. Um, Leningrad, the rest of the day, uh, you see some great architecture of the 18th and 19th centuries. Um, uh, there are, you know, long, wide avenues, gracious canals and views, views across the uh, Neva River. Um, and... Um, you hear various facts from Popov and Laskin even, you know, Leningrad was the, uh, it was in Leningrad that the great October revolution started and the power of the Soviet was first established. Um, 
though no longer the capital is still one of the greatest cities in the world, growing industry and cultural facilities. Um, in the mills where machinery whirls and hums, in the lively debates and business meetings, in the everyday work of the Soviets, in the schools and the universities, in the clubs and the libraries, and in the many playgrounds, everywhere a new life is being forged, a new, a new man created, so says Popov. But uh, apart from all the grandeur, you see get the kind of the standard life uh, in the people. Uh, there are, there are uh, poor people, crowds virtually everywhere. Um, the, uh, the city's splendor is kind of dilapidated. Uh, there's dust, sus and sweat and noise, uh, scattered cobbles on the streets, broken paving stones, chains of crowded trams with people spilling out and uh, building paintwork is faded and cracks appearing. Um, Organisation is generally kind of chaotic. There's lots of babushkas, kind of grandmothers with um, headscarves on, cleaning streets and buildings or sitting and watching people go by. Um, and um, you also kind of pick up, this is kind of a bit of a summary of your days in Leningrad as well. You kind of pick up that foreign currency is particularly welcomed wherever you you know, it seems to obviously have a, 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 a positive effect on Yevgeny, but, um, but likewise, whenever you are purchasing anything, that, that you know, you, you open a, a wallet or a purse and there's some rubles maybe in there, but there's also, um, you know, some British pounds or whatever, and they, they, they clearly want the foreign currency. Uh, you notice that that goes a long way to uh, getting uh, favours and stuff like that. Um, there's propaganda posters everywhere, uh, you know, uh, posters for the, the five year plan, drive for literacy, the threat of counter revolutionaries. Um, and um, the people are sober and practically dressed. Um, they, they somehow contrive to look both kind of supremely capable yet beaten and downtrodden at the same time. Um, but that is your kind of general experience of Leningrad and the kind of things that kind of um, coalesce and kind of form in the afternoon kind of tour around the city. Um, you, the day moves on and at some point you're going to need to uh, uh, make a move for your meeting at six o'clock. Okay, are our little friends anywhere still or do we have some new ones? Um, give me a luck roll. In fact, a group luck roll. It's got oh the lowest God. luck. Okay, so my luck is mine. 55. <laughs> well, I made oh, I missed it by two. Right, so group, no. luck roll is, group luck roll is whoever's got the lowest luck does the roll. So my luck is 55. What's Mine's everybody 30. else's? Oh, Seven, nine. <laughs> Mine's 31. So, Ma so Maxime? You're doing the lip crawl. Uh, well, I made it. Yay! Okay. Uh, maybe your your little confrontation has had an effect, certainly for now, uh, and you haven't seen sight nor sound of uh, uh, any tale this afternoon. Well, you've certainly been in the company of Papa Van Laskin, of course, um, but you drop back at the hotel about four o'clock, so you have a bit of time to kind of freshen up and then get out. Um, do you take the back way out or the lobby when you exit for your meeting? When we exit for the meeting, we've got to take the back way out. The I question is whether do. we all go. What's the tour doing at the time of the meeting? Nothing. You are basically back at the hotel. The day itinerary is finished and you have a few hours before the symphony in the evening. Okay. Well, is it perhaps... worth Sticking and some going out the front, some going out the back, just in case that they try and follow one lot of us again. We could certainly do that. Oh, I mean, we've um, done it before and that's worked before. So, yeah, let's uh, let's go two out the front, two out the back. I, I, I've got an idea. I, I, I'll go out the front and because there's a cafe opposite they waited in last time. That's true. That's true. Yes. I'm going to go into the cafe. Yeah. Get myself a cup of tea or coffee or tea probably um and see if they're in there 
Okay. Uh, is, uh, so is anyone else going out front with Eleanor? If Georgina and I go to get, um, if Eleanor and I go together and then the yeah. boys can go out the back because that's more likely. Okay. And if it seems all clear, then Eleanor and I will come and meet you. Okay. Right. okay. And if it isn't, we well, will see them. I'm, busy. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, because you have an address for Golovin, um, that maybe you've asked Yveni where it is. Or yes. one of you has. <laughs> yeah. Must have wandering that, randomly around Leningrad for hours again. Yes. It's probably pertinent because you need to take a train. Oh. It's a short train, but you do need to uh, go via the Finland railway station. Um, and uh, from there, it's a short walk to the uh, Alexander Bridge and, uh, and then on to the house where he lives. Um, so, okay. So, uh, the two chaps disappear around the back. Um, Eleanor and Georgina, you uh, exit the hotel. Um, can I have a spot hidden from either of you, please? Yes. Uh, no, I'm I'm too focused on tea and insufficiently focused on my surroundings. Okay. They'll be in the cafe. We'll just go there, have a cup of tea. And... We'll be able to see. Yeah. I am gasping for a cup of you, tea. You go across, you go, grab your tea, um, and um, you um, you don't um, see anyone in there, actually. Well, no one that stands out as OGPU um, in the cafe at this point in time. So maybe you're early, or, or they're just having their break, or they're somewhere else. I wish they'll have a cake and a and a little yeah little yeah. pot of tea between us you know okay. don't, don't want to waste such things fine well you do that and um and then i guess you all kind of rendezvous at the station mm -hmm. um are, is anyone taking steps to you know if you were being tailed to steps to avoid being tailed as it were yep. like it's like, a, like, you, like you're being stealthy perhaps and if you if we used yep. uh, like a stealth roll to see how well you did that <laughs> no need, <laughs> well, uh, mike would you like us to make a stealth roll by any chance yeah that, if you want to be stealthy <laughs> that sounds a great idea this is yeah. not going to go very well because my stealth is rubbish but same i have a very yeah. Yeah. Eye. oh yeah that's that's really no no my my cane really bangs down on the cobblestones <laughs> as i walk <laughs> Yeah, Geor Georgina's just like, no, well, they weren't in the cafe, therefore we must be fine, mustn't we, yeah, Eleanor? Absolutely, absolutely fine. Yes, we'll just draw lots of attention to ourselves as two lovely English ladies walking arm in arm and pointing at things as we go past. <laughs> okay. And um, Maxine, what did you say, you and Francis, did that you make rolls now? Yes. Well, we, we made did. them, but we didn't make them. <laughs> That's very good. Okay, <laughs> fine. So you meet up at um, um, uh, just, where have I put it? I just wrote it down. Finland Station, did you say? No, oh, Finsky Peru Clock Station. Peru Lock Station. Uh, and as I say, it's a short trip. Um, with uh, there's not really any hassle because enough of you speak enough Russian to you know get a ticket, uh, and um, you're you're soon standing outside um, a, a once quite grand house, but now in a very sorry state. Um, the city that the city though is is kind of filled with such buildings as I've sort of noted before. Um, you you see the doorway is. Um, it seems more like a tenement house now than perhaps, you know, single family used to live there. Uh, there are, there's a, a, a pair of uh, chaps, uh, youngish, kind of sat on the, on the stoop, basically. Um, we don't really pay you any mind. The door is kind of open behind them. Um, what do you want to do? Let's, let's get in off the street before anyone mm -hmm. does come past. Do you say anything um, to this pair? Or you yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna kneel I kneel down next to them um and take out a shilling and say in Russian, um if 
anybody comes near the house, can you let us know? Yeah, yeah, can do. What, 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 what do you, what do you want? Are you here to see someone? We're here to see Golovin. Mm, they nod, and they go. They point up. You've been very helpful. Thank you. Um, and you wander in, and yeah, it's quite clearly that um, you know there's quite a lot of rooms in this quite big house. Um, many of them are being shared by multiple families, so there's a lot of off spill into the corridors and washing and people coming and going. But no one really pays you much bother. There's a few looks because obviously you're fairly well dressed and look a bit different, um, and um, so you do get a few stares. But no one, you don't, you don't really feel threatened. There's kind of a you know sense of being a bit fish out of water, but but you don't really feel threatened, and people don't really. Uh, pay you any bother in that way um uh and you presumably make your way up the flight of stairs to the up, well upwards i guess um as you go if you ask directions everyone just says keep going he's at the top basically <laughs> um of course he is um and yeah so he's basically in at the top of the house in what would be like a, an attic room so he's the only person on this floor uh, it's just the stairway stops at a single door, um, which is closed. I'm, I'm going to have, I'm going to stick my ear against the door and have a bit of a listen first. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm mostly deaf, but let's try this. That, no, I can't hear anything from in there. I don't know if he's in there or not. It's probably because I'm knocking on the door with my cane. So oh. you can't hear <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Um, the, the Golovin opens the door, um, looking as he did before. Uh, he kind of just kind of gestures you in. Inside the room is is fairly bizarre. Um, every surface, bed, chair, table, um, and a chest. And much of the floor covered stacks of papers, which appear mostly handwritten uh, in um, uh, crabbed hand. There's some printed pamphlets, but mainly it's all what appears to be Golovin's notes. Um, the walls have been papered with similar sheets. Um, and uh, you can see that there are multiple sheets on the wall, as in there's layers of notes on the wall. Um, there is but one chair in the room. Um, and as you kind of enter, Golovin starts kind of clearing a space uh, uh, around that and the bed and the chest. And, um, and as, as you think he's clearing the chest for someone to sit down on, he clears the top and lifts it out and pulls out a bottle of vodka. Good man. And, uh, and, and some, you know, just enough mismatched uh, glasses. He then kind of pours with a shaky hand, pours this vodka um, and um, gestures for you to sit down, at which point one of you can use the uh, chest if you want to sit down on it. I'm used to flaky artists, but on a scale of like one to ten, how flaky is this? Um, it's, it seems in the region of nine to ten, perhaps. Um, yeah. You notice, because your, your eyes probably catch, catch the these more than the others, you notice within the notes are symbols. Um, there are annotated typefaces, plans, diagrams. Um, some of you might notice dates and numbers. And um, it's like every piece of paper is totally covered. Um, a spot hidden role for many of you. Yeah, go on. I'm going to do a spot hidden because I do like um, no. extreme story things. Uh, yes, that is amazingly a hard success. Okay. Um, as you kind of all look around and are taking this in, both Georgina and Ellen have spot the same thing. You both realise you're looking at the same thing automatically. And you see a sketch of what looks to be a, a nightmarish creature, all angles and limbs. And you see that it's kind of... It's, it seems to be kind of coming or rising out of the ground. And then as you look at it, you kind of realize, no, that's water. That's like a lake. This thing is rising out of. It sends this kind of cold, kind of shiver down your spine. 
Does it look in any way like the creature that attacked us on the boat? No, far, far more weird and worse. Uh, I sort of mumble a a sort of a questioning hubble. He he kind of mm, grunt. He just grunts at that, and you think that might have been a yes, but you couldn't be quite sure. Um, as as you are sitting down and he kind of you know is grunting, he kind of from this pile of paper he seems to miraculously kind of find the one sheet he's looking for and pulls it out, and he just goes this, and. Um, he presents to you this written um, sheet of paper um, that um, you won't be able to read at this point um, because you can't really see it. But basically, like that, I mean, crabbed handwriting takes up the whole page, obviously. Um, But you can check out the kind of like, you see this bit here that kind of looks like a verse or, you know, it's just written like a poem or verse. That kind of, that's the bit that stands out. Um, and um, he uh, he hands it to uh, to Eleanor because you just mentioned Huber, didn't you? So uh, yeah, he hands it to you. You see that is in Cyrillic script, uh, and nothing, as I say, jumps out other than the implication of some sort of verse within the text. Um, he. Um, he just grunts Russian, translated from Komi, but using the rules of Chikuki and Altor. Uh, they are almost dead, dead languages. The answer is good. I know. It will help you. This is how I have spent my time these three years, but I can only finish it after Moscow. Um, something changed in Moscow. The, I had no chance to give it to Krylov before. Um, he starts saying something in Russian you don't quite catch and he and he points to the page and, and he kind of looks at you all and says the names of the dark stars I know uh, Abith, Yimar, Alob, Kwa and Zarth Are they written on a... the paper? Yeah, you notice those names are written on the paper and can I have a power roll from oh, all of them? Oh God! Oh, Don't God. read from the book. <laughs> oh yeah, well and truly. Hang on, how's, how's, that's a good one. Um, yeah, that's actually a hard success. Yeah. Okay, so Francis a success. I'm a success. Pass. Pass. Maxime. Fail. No. Okay, Maxime. Um, for a moment, it all seems to go a bit quiet. And I'm and not sure if you kind of, your hearing has kind of gone a bit fuzzy for a second. You kind of shake your head and then it's gone. The rest of you, as those words are being said, you feel as this great pressure descend on you. It's almost like being underwater. It's like the word sounded in your head against this kind of pressure pressure building up they kind of sounded almost distorted and for a moment you saw this woman appear in the corner of the room kind of flicker into existence kind of a young woman bareheaded in an olive drab kind of tunic she was there for like a second and then and then she's gone just as soon as she came Say again. Did she have violet eyes? No, I don't think she did. No, no. But she, you know, she was there and she, and she wasn't. It's almost, for the three of you made the parallel, it's like the words conjured her. And, and she just, you know, seemed like one of your visitors, perhaps. Mm. Um, I wonder if that's Anna. The sign, he starts speaking again, the sign in the answer can be D's, of course. Krylov knows this. The correct version is drawn on the wall in Krylov's room in Moscow. Yes? And there is a number you will need when you say it. Uh, You must have that. Krylov knows that. Or Gottman. 
Uh, I don't know it. The, the chain of stars. Yes, perhaps uh, speak to Gottman near the lake. Okay. How do we contact this Gottman? Which lake? Is it the lake I just saw? Oniga, he says. Oniga. And then there's somebody else in the room. You see that child that he was with before, who's suddenly there. And he's, he's, you realise he's actually sitting right next to you, Maxime, when he wasn't a moment ago. Can I have a sanity roll, please? Ah. The, the child downstairs? No. No, this his visitor a, that was, well... The vis yeah, the child that you saw in the park with him. Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes, I'm okay. Oh, yeah, no, I think I'm fine. Okay. Yes, I'm fine. Whoa, just though. <laughs> Not good. Ellen and Georgina? Oh, oh you want more from us too. I do, I do. Yeah, I was kind of hopeful that you might have forgotten, maybe. <laughs> I passed. Uh, okay. No, I have failed horribly. Okay, so you kind of turn around and, and, and you just see this child sitting next to Maxime and just for a second you're kind of like, oh, you know, a surprise. Just use one point, please. Okay. Um, this child is painfully thin. Um, Golovin greets him without surprise uh, and then introduces him as his brother, Pavel. You'd think Pavel is probably seven years old. Um, Golovin clearly is in his 40s. Um, Pavel, do you see the woman in the olive dress? The one we just saw? Yes, she visited just now. The words... They, they must have called her. Do you know who she is? No, she's just an, another. Another what? Another visitor? Mm, yes, yes. Um, yes, you, know you have them. You have them, yes? Yes, yes we do. Then you do understand. You... Yes. Do you know what I... calls you? Why do you come here rather than staying in the place that you already are? I come to be with my brother, Pavel says. Oh. That's sweet. And can you choose when to come? I'm going to speak to him like a seven-year-old in my very broken Russian. <laughs> I know. I sometimes, sometimes, yes, but it is when... This is when things change and I, I, I'm drawn, drawn here. I, I don't understand. You know, he's, he's speaking like a seven year old as well. So he's, he's not really. Um, Gutman, um, Golovin, sorry. Um, it says, it is the power of Hulba. It calls, it calls the dead back. They will be here. The closer here comes, the, the stronger it will be. They, when he is, when he is here, they will remain, and all will be free of death. It is a, it is a wonderful thing. No, I'm not sure that's a good idea. I'm not saying that out loud, but I'm definitely thinking it. <laughs> Uber is coming. Where do you go when you're not here, Pavel? Into the, the water. Feel the water. What's it like? Is it cold? Yes. Are there other people there? Sometimes. Some of them, some of them are nice. Okay. I keep away from the other ones. Very wise. Do you know someone called Robert? I'll, try, I'll describe my brother to him. He kind of nods a little bit, like, yeah, I might have seen him. Okay. How I'm many not... people do you see? It changes. I see different people. There are a lot of them, a lot of them waiting to come back. And they're all in a lake. Sometimes, sometimes there's just nothing. 
sometimes I don't remember. But I remember being, I remember the water. That's normally before I, I'm back with my brother, but it's not always like that. Most of the times I can't remember. I'm a bit flawed. I don't really know what to say now. Gull Gull Gullivan um, kind of interrupts and he says, he is almost here. He is getting stronger. Krylov is calling him, hurrying him to us. Mm. He will defeat death for all. A new world, Pavel, has been returned to me. He smiles. While we've got him, we never got a chance to do this yesterday, but I am going to ask him about the guy who attacked me, see if he knows anything ah, yeah. about it. Okay, he says, I, I know nothing of this. What, what did he look like? I'm um, giving him a description of the soldier. He looks and he, he then smiles and says, I, mm, I think I know this man. I think you will do too. He, mm, could it, he says, to, he kind of asks a question, he says, was it Krylov? I've never met Krylov, I don't know. Maybe, a, maybe, maybe not, maybe another one. I thought that Maybe Krylov one of the Zalozny. Oh, it didn't look like no. it's Zalozny. We've, we've met one of those. Ah. Oh. There is no good and evil, only the truth, he says. Mm. How uh, long has it been since you lost your brother, Pavel, for the first time? 30 years or more. Okay. 30 it years. When no wonder did, you are so pleased to see him. When did mm. he start appearing to you? Uh, when Huber when Huber took shape and form and started to draw closer. And when was that? You know this. A year ago? No. no it is not that long ago. I'm guessing a, a couple months. of months ago. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've said on that, I, I, I need to say no more, he says. Uh, he, he seems to kind of clam up a bit at this point, as if he's kind of like said what he wanted to say and, you know, but... Um, I'm, I'm just waiting you know, he's for not, the, he's, he's got not, more to tell us next tomorrow night. <laughs> he's, 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 he's not shooing you out as yet, uh, but he seems to kind of take a pause, unless, you know, obviously you can ask what you like. I'm going to um, top up his drink. I'm going to start reading this letter. Okay, you start reading it and realise this is quite hard to read. This isn't like Russian. This isn't actual like modern Russian. This is like, you know, equivalent old English, uh, of, you know, of various forms written by a mad person. Um, just, just don't read it out loud. Um, uh, I, I, I need help with some of these words. Um, <laughs> could, you, could you help me here, please? <laughs> I know, no, you, you must, you must, Read it yourselves. I, 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 I have written the answer and I've given it to you. It is your, it is yours to use now. You would, you to give it to Krylov and call, and call Huber to Earth. Yes, and then he kind of pauses and says, "Ah, maybe you think to push him away. Maybe, maybe the opposite. Yes, you're um, you're coming to a lot of conclusions here. Well." <laughs> Of course, we're going to bring Hooper back. We just we are oh, not paying no, attention you, to the Great War. You, well, you, you, the choice is plain. You, you use this to call him. Maybe with Krylov, you call him, and he is here forever and changes things. And and your the dead will be with you forever. But is there going to not, be room for them all? He's, he just shooks his shoulders and says, but this is, this, the answer will call him to you wherever you are, but you must have the symbol and you must have the number. I have told you this. Yes. I do not have these. You must look to D. 
We will acquire them. Look to Gottman or Krylov for the number. Krylov hey. learnt his power, you see. Krylov learnt it, but Gottman, he is the power. He is not a man. He oh. is more than a man. Where can Gottman be found? This lake. Onega the lake. lake. Onega, Lake Onega. Onega. Lake Onega. You see, you see and, the name. I give you, I give you the name and the, where they are on the newspaper I gave you. Do you not read this? Yes, but we did not understand at that point. You now see, you see, yes? Yes. The name, yeah. Gottman. You, 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 I mean, you haven't got, I presume you haven't yeah. got the newspaper there with you. If no. You no. You aren't but he kind of goes on. I wrote, I came back. I bought this, this from, I bought this back to give. It's, it's now this safe. Why? This is, this, you see the importance of it starts getting a bit out of shape. To the, yes. Oh, I do. Of, with this, we not can following make, him. It's, it's, but this we can make heaven on earth. It is a beautiful and wonderful thing. Uh, j just one question. You, you say we have to get the sign from this D. Where are they? D, D, you know D? The D. Englishman. John D. Oh, John D. Yes, that is him. Uh, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> of course. I know I'm out of character, but in character, I'm just going to look completely blank. <laughs> <laughs> well, inside a bit of me goes, oh! <laughs> I, 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 he, he kind of rambles on a bit. You hear Gottman's name mentioned again. He says, says um, Gottman is, is truer than Krylov. I, I tell you this to warn you. You must talk to him, but you be careful. He is not like others you have met before. I, I understand. We have to be very careful in order to make paradise on earth. That seems very logical, Anna. <laughs> well, it's clear, isn't it? He, 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 then, he then sort of starts murmuring about the newspaper and he, and he just turned. And in a moment, you know, like when he was in the chess club, he was kind of for a moment or two, he was quite lucid and, and with it. And it, this seems to kind of come back to him now. And he just turns and says, why are you on the list? Who? All of us? Yes. Your names. No idea. Where was the you list? understand that Huber is real. He is, will be in our world soon. He looks in even now. If you think to push back, and he kind of puts his hands on Pavel's shoulders, and you kind of get the impression that, well, it's not a, he can understand why some people would want to push Huber back, but, but he doesn't want to lose his brother again, like some of you. Um, I, well, I gave you what I know. I gave you that. You must think and you must choose. It is in your hands now. Push back if you will, or not. I have done, I have done my piece now. Well, of course not. With this, we can turn earth into a literal heaven for every person who's died. And it kind of is it, kind of like <laughs> more agitated and less coherent self falls back into shape and he says, I have spoken. And he starts to kind of basically just pushes you off your chairs out out of the door and lets you, you know. Yeah, resist. that's fine. But, that's more than enough crazy for tonight. Let's go to the symphony. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> calm. He pushes down you out, and you have Russian. obviously, Eleanor. You've got the the paper he gave mm. you in your hands. I I, um, I clasp it quite tightly as I leave, and then sort it out into a handbag. And uh, you uh, uh, you head back, uh, catching the train back to the hotel. Um, Two kids still there on the doorstep as we leave, or have yeah. they disappeared? They are. Yeah, they are. No, no one came by? No, no. No, we did a good job watching. Thanks, lads. And, uh, yeah, you uh, arrive back. As you, uh, are you going in the lobby or you're, or you're going in the rear entrance? Or? I think, I think, um, 
seeing as we went out the back door, I think we, me and Maxime should go back in the back door. Yeah. Okay, Eleanor so you... and I should go in the front. Okay, yeah. Eleanor and uh, Georgina, as you enter the lobby, you see Popov is wandering around, and when he sees you, it's, clear, it's obvious he's been waiting for you to come back because he marches over and says, greeting comrades. You are not, uh, you are not uh, ready for the state conservatory? What? What, 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 is, what drew you away? Tea and cake. Cake, yes. Ah, well, but please, please, I, I do ask for my help in future. The city can be difficult to navigate. Uh, I, 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 bid you, uh, I bid you good evening and we'll see you at the symphony, yes. See you at the symphony. We're just going to go and change now. And he kind of like nods and rushes off kind of thing. Um, um, you, you then he uh, appears, you know, as if by magic uh, at your side and discreetly reports that uh, Popoff was very concerned about your safety and whereabouts, particularly your whereabouts this <laughs> evening. Um, yeah, I bet he was. But I, uh, but I, 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 I tried to distract him, but uh, I, I did my best. Thank I'll you very him, much. Uh, I'll give him a tip in English money. Fine. Okay, and with that, shall we have a quick tea break? Yes. Yes, sure. Tea okay, break so good. we're going to have a quick tea break and be back uh, shortly. So see you in uh, a few minutes. Hello, and we're back. And uh, we've all refreshed from our beverages, which uh, are clearly tea and not vodka, although you wouldn't know because you can't see what's in our cups. This is Russian so, caravan tea. Well, there you are. This is me actually trying a cup of tea for once. Because <laughs> you guys talk about tea every week. We yeah, do. Try it. You, don't, you, you haven't understood that tea is a code word. So <laughs> time. It's my so, safe um, word. <laughs> so uh, you arrive back at the hotel. Uh, you have uh, the symphony tonight. Uh, but uh, as you're all changing into your evening wear, uh, you get a call. Uh, uh, Max, well, Maxine, you get a call from um, the lobby from you, Benny, and who says that uh, uh, a lady, uh, a ballerina called Oksana, is in the foyer and uh, it would like to speak to you. Mm. Shall, shall he send her up or are you coming down? Um, I, I'd rather come down, thank you. I think that would be more uh, appropriate, don't you? Okay. Um, I mean, the other others of you can start to materialize as if you wish to be in this or or not, but you know, because you're all kind of starting to gather. But uh, but Maxine, when you get down there, Sa Oksana is is waiting, and she says, "Hello, uh, I thought tonight you might like to go to uh, the conservatory." You you mean where the symphony is being held? Oh no 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 no! More interesting, more fun. We can get drinks and talk. All of you, all of you and your friends. Yes. Uh, but if you yeah. want to go to symphony, we can we could do that too. But I thought you'd prefer something a bit less. Stuff. Well, we we've. I suppose it depends what it is really. I wouldn't mind something a little calmer, at least for a while. Maybe stay for the first half and sneak out. Oh, that sounds fun. Yes, let's do that. Anastasia's with her lover tonight. I don't really like him. He's very dour. So I thought oh. I would come and see you. <laughs> very wise. I, I, I'm I'm very humbled. I'm sure. Um, okay, let's let's do that. And and if if the symphony turns out to be far too stuffy and boring, then I'm sure we can take our leave beforehand. I shall greet Oksana with great enthusiasm because I rather like her and her friend. They are they are free spirits like myself and remind me of all my my interesting London friends whom I'm rather missing. Very good. Um, she, she kind of makes a few comments about the symphony, about the Bolsheviks taking all the good boxes these days. Oh. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but says, you know, we can do that and then we can, uh, we can disappear off and talk. And uh, you can tell me about Moscow. Oh, I, I, I rather wanted to hear the symphony. Well, I mean, I'm not saying you can't stay, she says in a, you know, oh. but, you know, I'm only offering you a, a chance to see more of Leningrad before you have to depart. 
haven't seen rather too much of it, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a, a bit of a day. Oh, well, you tell me all about it later. Let us hear the music and let it liven our souls and clean, cleanse our cleansers and uh, and be damned with the, the Bolsheviks be damned, eh? She said rather loudly. Laughing. She really doesn't learn, does she? Either that or she's been deliberately sent to test us. <laughs> anyway, so you all head off to the symphony um, and um, uh, Luskin says, oh, you must introduce me to you. You've made a friend. Oh, I, were you at the ballet the other night, weren't you? He says Roxana. And she just looks at him with this sort of stony face. So young. Yes. <laughs> he kind of like gets a message. Says, oh, well, well, please, uh, please, you're welcome to join us. And he kind of <laughs> disappears. Uh, and uh, yeah, you head off to the symphony and uh, you hear... Um, uh, Soviet composer Lev uh, Knipper's Symphony Number no. Two, uh, with the uh, uh, Red Army Choir in attendance, and um, it's oh, quite well stirring, happy. <laughs> stirring music, you know. And um, is um, uh, yes, I mean, there's not more can be said from that really. <laughs> so, uh, but it's, it's a choir you know, man. How can you not a, be enthused? It's a pleasant. I, I'm just trying to give you some description, and I, other than <laughs> stirring, I, I'm, I'm slightly lost for going on about it. So I'm going to move on to more. It's going to continue to be stirring. I think it will be stirring all part. evening. Probably building <laughs> to a crescendo of big stirring. Um, right. And uh, but you know you have a you have a pleasant first half, and perhaps you know Oksana, who is clearly keen to now move on um is uh you know maybe you maybe you feel that that is probably possibly a wise thing um if, to go and get I a drink no it's a choir how can anyone not want to see listen to a choir it's, uh, it's no, no, so I right. disagree it's a bit so ghastly the, oh. the, the, i didn't know to listen to the singing or the instruments why have they got them at the same time <laughs> it's, just, it's just an atrocity to my ears do uh, do any of you stay at the symphony, or uh, or do any of you leave? I'm uh, leaving. I'm happy I... to. I'm happy to go. And if people want to stay, I'm. I offer to sort of play cards in the lobby with people. I don't I, to wait. I, I, I don't wish to stay here. The the the, 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 the most awful music I've heard in such a long time. But it's a choir. I love a good. I mean, choir. I can. I know it's not a Welsh choir, but <laughs> it's a choir. You know, as as. The daughter of a Catholic vicar, I I feel, I think that's the thing. Um, I I I. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> as a daughter of a Protestant vicar, um, <laughs> I, I I must say that the choir does sound a little one-dimensional. I'm I'm just a bit overstirred, really. My heart can only take so much swelling with. Civic pride. Exactly. It's Let's go with the lot of you. Gin. Let's play some cards. So you do all go, yeah? I'm okay. torn, but I don't let them go off on their own. We'll have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We've got FOMO. <laughs> okay. Um Right, okay, so you um, sneak out half time and head over to the conservatory with Oksana. And um, I might have to regale them with a few sort of like stirring Welsh choral songs on the way just to show them, you know, that not, not all choirs are bad. Oh, I'll join in. Men of Harlech. <laughs> yes, well, I'm, I'm not sure Miss Wright will know Sospanbach, but so uh, <laughs> probably better stick with Men of Harlech. Okay. All right. Well, well, you have a pleasant evening with uh, Oksana, who uh, who basically over the course of the evening makes it very clear um, that she would like to come to Moscow with you. Um, she's happy to be a unofficial guide and tell you how things really are. Um, you can clearly understand that she's she doesn't sort of come out with it directly, but clearly she's kind of saying, I can come to Moscow, Moscow with you and then everywhere else and then back to England because that would be the <laughs> best thing in the world. Uh, but she hasn't quite pushed that boat out quite that far yet. But she clearly is very easy to read. She's, you know, she asks lots of questions about London 
how much more exciting it would be to do the ballet there. And um, um, but she does, you know, she's genuinely interested in that. Um, she sort of she brings up the fact that you've had a sort of a day of it and wants to kind of know why, kind of, to kind of pick at that a little bit and sort of do you reveal anything? Oh, definitely. After after kind of her her nearly being abducted last night and that's um, you know, beating them off and her and her friend being so brave, I shan't hesitate to tell her that um two dreadful men of the, the same type that uh, accosted us last night tried to um get us to give them money today. Yeah, she says these these Bolsheviks, they all need to be shot in a loud voice. Oh. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go so quite that far. <laughs> huh? I wouldn't go quite that far. I was just a little surprised. Yes, well, they, they, they yes, they were. Well, and you say you told uh, your tour guides about them? Yes. Yes. Very firmly. They said they'd be disciplined. Oh, I, I think they will. They, they, uh, they, they, they might pick on us, those of us who live here, but you, you are, you are valuable to, to this state and they, uh, they will be, they will be dealt with, I'm sure. Did anything else happen today? No, not say? really. I mean, there was the museum, that was really nice. Oh, yes, the Palace of Art. Hey, can I just ask though? You said we are valuable to the state. What 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 are your thoughts on that? Well, they 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 want to, these Bolsheviks. They want to promote that they are they they are enlightened and they are and they are they have a place in the world and and uh, to be recognised as a powerful state and uh, and uh, you being here validates this that you your tales of your experiences with Russia will will will. They see as being positive. They they, they see you, you as emissaries of the world, and to tell the the story of the Soviets' great achievements uh, uh, when you return home. This is why you are here. Oh, okay, yes. so, fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have some lovely tea and cake as well. Ah, very good. It's not as good as this vodka, though, is it? Damn. No. I think it was only a little stale. <laughs> The, uh, yep. Okay, so you don't reveal anything about Golovin and no. Cyrillic handouts and all that kind of stuff. Okay, no. fine. That's too too weird. It would take too much explanation. Okay, um, I'm going to throw this in as a, a an idea roll. Oh God, okay. Idea roll. Okay. Oh. But we Lord don't need her yet. We haven't died. <laughs> <laughs> I was 15. Let me just double check what's my uh, character. Where's okay. my. That was a pass. Uh, yeah, that was a hard pass. Okay. Uh, the thought enters your mind. It's up to you whether you want to kind of act on it or not, and, you know, whether I'm being all honest and everything. But um, she clearly has a very good command of English and Russian. Um, and um, from what you did see of that uh, note from Golovin is going to require somebody with better skill than all of you lot. Um, so, well, if she's course. coming to Moscow, depend. Now, this obviously all filters down to how much you want to trust her or not. Um, but if you did want to trust her, um, she might be, or she might know of somebody who could translate that for you. Yeah, that's just what you would kind of particularly. Um, Eleanor and Maxim in terms of you know your Russian's not that bad so um, you know that would I think it's good mind. enough for that mm. you, you think you think well given her given her knowledge of where you are even if she can't do it she probably knows somebody you mm. could yeah um, I so, mean I suppose yeah. it's quite do or die isn't it I mean you know she'll either be on board for it or she'll be horrified and leg it and not talk yeah. to us again so it's kind of a win-win either way <laughs> yeah, the, the, I mean, the, the, the other thought that, you know, um, some of you may think, that, you know, it, it, there's no reason why you can't have a go at translating it. It's going to be work. Um, those of you who know enough Russian, it's going to be a work. Uh, you know that. And so that is still remains an option. I'm not trying to say you must get a translator, but I'm just saying 
that might be an easier route. Drainies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Entirely how, up to you. How long is the journey to Moscow? Uh, your Seven itinerary hours. tells you that it's a um, 13 hour journey. Are we doing train. a sleeper train? Yes, sort of. <laughs> It's a sleep it's train, we don't get any sleep. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah well, that makes sense. Um, mm. Anyway, um, okay. that evening passes pretty well. Um, Oksana kind of sees you back near enough to the hotel, so you'll you know, find your way back okay. Um, Oksana, could you, would you like to come for a drink in the bar? She says that would be... Uh, Yes, why not? Why not? And uh, and she kind of, I mean, ha have, as of this point, have you said, yes, okay, come to Moscow with us? I think we yes. should. I think we should. I think yeah. we did. We did say that they should sort out, like, some tickets or some papers or mm -hmm. something. And um, Okay. So, yeah. she, so, so at the bar in the hotel, she kind of goes over the arrangements and you kind of tell her, yeah, we're supposed to be... Um, we're supposed to be leaving um, about five five o'clock tomorrow. We've got a we've got a thing around the Russian Museum in the morning, um, and then we uh, we're checking out the hotel about five, according to our itinerary, and going to the uh, October railway station for to to catch the train for Moscow. So she says she will she will uh, arrange a ticket and see uh, see you at the station, um, and uh, you know just sort of does all that kind of stuff at the bar with you at that point as that's happening or really just before you get into the bar Yveni stops Maxime and has a quiet word okay. um, saying that um, he had a, um, a a young lady visitor who was um, quite nervous and um, ah. he felt discretion was perhaps the best so he, he, he felt that she could be trusted so he's put her in your room well, that's... You're going to be getting one heck of a reputation, <laughs> sunshine. <laughs> that, uh, that saves a lot of time and <clears throat> what I was going to ask you, because um, I was going to ask you to meet this, this young lady tomorrow morning, but uh, since she is here... Um, right, well, thank you for letting me know. Um, I, I sort of pass him some English money and, and say, uh, keep a particularly keen eye out tonight, will you? I will do, sir. Yes. Yes. Are you going to head off to the room at this point or leave uh, her waiting? To yeah, I should probably go up and, and check on her. Okay. So while the rest of you have a, have a chatter with Oksana, Maxim, you head to your room and you find Sophia in your room, your, um, your mother's uh, uh, contact's daughter in, uh, in Leningrad. And um, she is um, a little nervous and, and sort of says, um, uh, I, I, I come to find if, if, if you can take me with you. Well, hopefully, yes. I was intending to uh, come and find you tomorrow morning. Um, so this makes things a lot easier, in fact. Um, we are leaving at five o'clock. And uh, I also point out the back entrance to her. Okay, so she said, "You what? You, you I, I meet you here at five. Probably best at the station. I meet you at the station. Yes, and you will, um, you will arrange uh, the papers. Yes. Yes, I'll get that arranged. I, I will need papers to travel internally, and then I will need the papers to leave with you as well. Right." I'd better go and get that sorted then. <laughs> very good. She's very happy now. She's less nervous uh, and says she will see you tomorrow <laughs> at the is. station. Thank you. Good night. And she goes. Yeah, I rush down the stairs and uh, try <laughs> and find Yigveni straight away. <laughs> yeah, okay, he's there. Um, yes, I am in need of some uh, travel papers. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, for your friend? Yes. Right, yes. These are not easy to come by, but can I'm be done. aware of this, and uh, uh, I believe you should be given, you know, enough to maximise your efforts in that. And I pull out 
some more money for him. He says, leave it with me. I'll be, I'll be with you. Will you be in the bar, sir? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll make my way to the bar and we'll be there for leave, some time. Leave it with me. And you see him heading off in the direction of Laskin. Okay. Right. Uh, I, I sort of trust Laskin, so... Okay. I trust him more than Popov. Well, yeah, exactly. any of them. Okay, so you 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 end up in the the bar with Oksana as well. Um, does anyone um, have anything else they want to kind mm. of say or do with Oksana, or do you want yes. to move on? Yes, I, I I want to suss her out a little bit. So um, Oksana, uh, I I'm curious, and I, uh, please I, I'm sorry if this comes over rude. Is, is it I, just Humor me for a moment, if you wouldn't mind, and don't answer if you don't want to, but have you ever lost anyone close to you? My, 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 my parents, uh, oh, one sorry. died in the, in the war, and the other died after the war when the Bolsheviks took over and food was short. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I lost a brother in the war myself. Mm. Sometimes I, I think I can see him, <laughs> have conversations oh, in, with him. In your dreams, yes? Yes, in my dreams. Yes, yes. I sometimes dream of my parents. Yes. She clearly doesn't have any idea what you are getting at. Mm. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to just... I don't know. Put that out kind there. Of, I, what you? All right, I'll, I, I've got to try and convey this to the others um, with, while she's at the table. So, um, uh, Georgina you know, and, and, and Francis, you know, I, I was thinking, do you remember in the museum, I say in a very protracted way, um, when we were reading that text? Did, did, do you think? That um, you know, it it would that that perhaps we should we 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 should see that text in English maybe. Oh, that would be very interesting. I'm kind of getting her meaning here and going. Yes, it was a, a it was an unusual description and story. It seemed quite um emotive, it, and it, I'm not sure I quite understood it all. It had old Russian words that I just couldn't translate. I mean, Russia does, of course, have an incredibly rich and ancient history, and I shall witter on for a few minutes about <laughs> the <laughs> myths and <laughs> legends and associated folklore of ancient Russia. She says, oh, yes, yes, there are, there are, there are witches and monsters and things in our folklore, things that come out of the woods and take the children and the spirits in the water and uh, uh, and all these things. Yes, yes, uh, yes. This is what the country folk think, yes. Oh, city, we know better. We are more, as you say, cosmopolitan. Of course. What, what did you think about that text, Francis? What text do you mean? She says in a better English than I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just something that we saw at one of the museums that um, seemed to have to do with people in the water and, and ancient beliefs and things. Ah, water, water monsters, demons, spirits. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. Thing you like could not that. read it. I could. I can translate. I can. I can. You show me. I will. I will tell you what it says. Um, can I do a psychology role to see whether she's suspiciously over-eager or whether she's just trying to make a good impression? Okay, make a roll. I'd, I'd like to join No, in no. <laughs> Not even um, vaguely. I did pass it. Okay. Um, you get a sense that she is being pretty open and genuine. You don't, you're not detecting any subterfuge around it. Or oh, she's really good, but no, you, you're not really detecting anything that gives you any. Well, if she is point. really good, she has the advantage that I'm really terrible, and so it is <laughs> that my left hand has that bit of paper down in front of her whilst I'm sort of taking a sip of my drink. 
<laughs> she uh, she looks she says, says this this is what is this this is old this is hard to read I make out words uh, just don't say them out loud <laughs> something about a mirror and the uh, something in German or uh, something about a, Something calling something. Yes. I yes, would need sir. to. I, I. I can't make out many of the words. I need to think. Um, I can. Yes, I could translate this, but it would take time. I've got a bit of German. Which bits did you think of German, Roxana? She kind of points and says, "Well, there, there is a there's a mention of German. Um, something. Of uh, something in German." That is what it says. Okay. But I, I, I... So it's not actually. I need. I need. I need, I, I, I need less vodka in my head, and then a clear brain, and I. <laughs> I will. I would read this for you. Uh, I could. It is a I'll long journey. To, this is a long journey to Moscow. That's yeah. just what I was going to suggest, young lady. So yes. I take this with me, or. The moment she lifts it up from the table, it's. it's I've snatched it. I've got it back <laughs> in my handbag. Okay. I, bring that, it I bring I bring paper and pen with me tomorrow. Yes. Yes. I may need one of you to sit with me. Uh, yes. Some of the English the translation into English may be difficult, and I may need to to talk to someone. My, my Russian's reasonable. I, I can. And my English is very good. We will all be together on the train, looking out of the windows, drinking tea. Yes. Yes, she says. She sort of pauses and thinks, yes, yes. And and with that, um, the kind of evening kind of comes to a close, really. Um, <clears throat> uh, leaving you... Uh, she disappears off. Time for bed. Um, she disappears off. Uh, you can decide to have a final drink and a natter if you want, or head off to bed. Um, any natters we have, I think we should take a nightcap in our room. <laughs> okay. Open bar. Not a good idea. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, so you you know take a glass of something up with you, um, or a, a warm cocoa, and um, you can to one of your rooms if you want to have a natter. What do you want to natter about? So who's coming to Moscow with us? Oksana and her friend. No. no, no, just Oksana. Anastasia's got a lover. She doesn't want to go to Moscow. Oh. So Oksana oh, well. and Maxime's friend. Potentially, Sophia. We're working on getting her papers now. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, actually, you get a knock um, at some point, or. A message from Yeveni with some papers for um, uh, Sophia to uh, basically allow her to travel to Moscow, no, which is just really in case she gets stopped and that kind of thing. It's just uh, gives her a you know bit of cover, um, presumably because she hasn't mentioned it. Oksana has papers or something. Maybe being a ballerina, she gets papers to tour around or something, but. Um, but she hasn't mentioned that as an issue herself, so. But there you are. Strongly suspect she's going to get stopped and shot. <laughs> At some point. So, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, any, uh, uh, you all um, happy um, with I, your yeah, plan? Just, I was going to check then. I should really find it, shouldn't I? Um, so do we know where this Lake Onega is? Is, it on is this on our way? way? No, is it somewhere we we're going to have to sneak off to go find? Can we have a look on our itinerary map? Is there a... Did we get a nice map of Russia? Um, you did, you did. And... Um, and um, I brought one with me as well. So. Well, well done. And um, I'm just going to zoom ahead to tell you exactly, because I haven't got it in the bit I'm looking at the minute. Um, let me just grab this. Just stick a pin in a map of Russia. 
that's what it is. <laughs> See, Ellen is always so very organised. I'd be very surprised if you hadn't like got a map that was carefully. Ah, by chance, I put my finger on exactly the right page. How often does that happen? So, um, basically, uh, you realise uh, Lake o Onega. Um, you need to catch a couple of trains. You actually return from Moscow to Leningrad, um, and. Um, you would then um, presumably take a train from Leningrad to uh, Karelia, um, which is the uh, region where this lake is, which is basically up north, out of the way in the countryside, basically away from the cities. Um, and um, there is uh, Volkovstroy, um, a junction for the Vologda-Siberian Volog Railway. Um, and then you keep going and you arrive in Peros Petro Zavodsk uh, on the western banks of Lake Onega, the capital of the Karelian Republic. Um, you can see the lake on the map, it's a big lake. And if somebody was building a canal, which you know they are, um, it would certainly seem a plausible place where the canal would start or finish. Um, ah. So, um, but so it's not somewhere that's actually anywhere near anywhere on our itinerary. No, it would appear that you would have to, at some point, leg disappear it. from Moscow and leg it back to Leningrad and off into the countryside. Presumably, obviously, as you're aware, Mr. Weston is, is said he will appear in Moscow and advise you on all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, but looking at your map and the train routes and everything you have, that's your best guess. Yeah, well, we should really check in with Weston. Yes, yeah, yeah, well, we, we need to, because we need to introduce him to Ro Oksana anyway. Um, but yes, oh. yeah. at least we have a bit of an idea of where we might be attempting to get to now. Mm. I mean, that, that obviously falls back into the uh, the conversation with Hill and Weston at the start with them saying, um, you're kind of like not spies, but you are, and you kind of need to kind of at some point see whether they're using, you know, slave labor on this canal by this lake, and you need to be a little bit more careful and sneaky at that point. But until that point, don't worry, it's all a holiday. We'll get, we'll cover that when I see you in Moscow. So that starts to come back into your heads at this point about, oh yeah, there's. Um. Yeah, that non-holiday bit about <laughs> photos of slave labour. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we've got a bit of a plan, so I think we should probably get a, a good night's sleep or ready for our adventures tomorrow. Okay. Are we so, still sharing the same room? Yes. I keep you up for three hours scribbling in my notepad. I'm sorry, I was inspired. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you must <laughs> scribble really hard. Yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep going Very like so oh, yeah. you must be so sleepy now Eleanor it's been a very long day I know <laughs> I know scribbling. okay so right. when you, you know when inspiration strikes oh um, oh yes yes I do I do <laughs> I'm gonna give you a, a little uh, a whistle stop tour of the next day uh, to just keep things moving because uh, basically in the morning and afternoon, uh, there is a, uh, a short work from the hotel is the Russian Museum, which is um, an impre impressive collection uh, from uh, various private holdings, sister museums, legacies, gifts, um, and um, uh, the bulk of the collection of the former Museum of, of the Academy of Fine Arts. Uh, excellent works by Russian artists, 18th and century, 18th and 19th century uh, portrait painters, uh, with some modern movements also represented. Uh, some of the last are remarkable in their realism and narrative. And um, there's uh, comprehensive ethnographical exhibits on the, the races and peoples of the Soviet Union. Um, Anything on uh, witches? Not really. Not really. I mean, there, there, are, there are some, you know, paintings and that kind of thing that may be kind of reminiscent maybe 
that kind of subject matter, but um, but you know they're mainly explained as traditional folk dress for you know different regions. Um, so whether they really are witches would be questionable. Um, and um, but it's you know particularly for Georgina, it's a it is a very interesting day. You're actually seeing the stuff you wanted to see, the artwork and the uh, the various contemporary and um, historical art movements, which is all very lovely. Um, however, um, time marches on and uh, it's soon uh, you're back at the hotel, packing bags, getting ready to depart around five o'clock into taxis to take you to the, uh, the October railway station. Um, and um, unless you do anything wild and crazy, that's what's going to happen. No, I shall take a fond farewell of Yvigny, who has taken such good care of us. Oh, yes. I shall present him with a lovely portrait that I have sketched of him and a, you know, uh, ten shilling note or something. Can I have a um, art craft um, eye draw skill of some yep. kind? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is a magnificent portrait. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Have a tick. And um, uh, he is very impressed by this. You know, obviously he likes some money more, but this is really nice too. And uh, remembers it uh, and um, says, uh, says, you know, if you're ever back in Leningrad, uh, do not hesitate to call on him. He is ever at your service. Oh, thank you very much, Yvenu. We shall miss you. And uh, with further ado, you're on the, to the taxis and at the train station where Oksana, in all her glory, is ready to be travelling with her, you know, her uh, uh, custom travel bags for, you know, as a ballerina. Uh, and uh, slightly, uh, slightly differently is packed up Sophia, who is slightly uh, uh, less of a glorious scene uh, and more uh, kind of hiding in the corner quite afraid and timid and uh, very thankful for seeing Maxine turn up with some papers and um, and basically just kind of hides behind Maxime as much as possible but also says should 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 we sit apart on the train should I should I should I should be in, I should not be with you on the train it might be might be seen might be catch too much attention well, I, I don't see why, at least to start with, we should be separate. Um, but you never know. Well, we you know, you know best, but but I, I, I will move if needs be. I, I, I just want to be safe and, and not to cause a problem. Um, and um, you are shown onto a train. You have, um, you basically, it's not cabins. It's just one, you know, one big kind of cabin on the train. Um, you um the tour group are kind of split across about four carriages basically uh they're not totally yours there are you know russian um russian people in between various points uh quite you know mostly they're you know they're what you would term kind of you know russian peasantry simple people with simple clothing but you know, some are carrying, you know, baskets and food and some have got instruments and, all, you know, it's quite a, a bizarre yet wonderful kind of collection of people you're kind of strewn amongst and, you know, there's somebody playing a pipe at the end of the corridor and then somebody gets out some other kind of guitar-like thing and, and soon they're all kind of singing along kind of thing, you know, going like, well, we're on here for 13 hours, we might, might as well enjoy ourselves. Um, there are... Um, Clearly, the seats are kind of designed that you can kind of recline a little bit and maybe get some sleep. But clearly, if they carry on with this music, you're not going to get any. Oh, um, well, let's join <laughs> in. You know, might as well have a go. But, uh, with all this singing? <laughs> and, uh, you, but it doesn't really matter. Can, I'm Welsh. I'm going to sing. <laughs> if, you, uh, if, you, you know, if you sort of show willing and smile and you know, say a few words of Russian, um, that you soon, you know, you're being passed around, food's being passed around, you're being welcomed, and, and it's, you know, it's fantastic. And um, those of you who want a quiet time, just kind of move seats to the end of the carriage and just, you know, chill out a bit. Um, so clearly, Sophia is preferring to kind of just sit out of the way somewhere out, you know, not too noticeable. Um, 
Oksana, on the other hand, is, you know, dancing down the aisle kind of thing. And um, uh, she, she has forgotten any, all about doing any translation at this point. So unless you mention it. I do. <laughs> she's going to be I, I do. The moment I see her go for some vodka, I, I show her the paper again. Oh, I, I, I was just... What, I, Ah, right. she, oh yes, yeah, she you see it's got a disappointment in her face going like, oh yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that. Um what did I what did I promise last night? Um and so she kind of so very sensibly said we should we should go to another carriage where it is quieter and uh um and she she kind of says quite you know um perceptively do you not you not wish to see other people to see this? Is that correct? Yes, but in yes. many let ways. Let us go yeah. elsewhere. Let us go elsewhere. And but, but but also perhaps the noise would help cover our conversation. So maybe if we just went to the end of this carriage. Yes. Okay. She shoves a few people out of their seats by, you know, saying, "Oh, they've got free beer up there. Go over there." And <laughs> um, and. Uh, you know, I make a note of that because I think that is a brilliant move for a spy in my novel. <laughs> <laughs> and you two kind of get, you know, get a, get a little uh, couple of seats out of the way at the at the other end of the carriage, kind of thing, and proceed to you know work on the translation. Um, the rest of you have a great time. Um, at um, let me just have a look. It's a wonderful yeah, so. opportunity for me to continue with my sketches of scenes from Russian life because this is a little more of the vibrant peasantry that I was hoping to capture and um, be able to kind of recreate in play and, uh, and, and other interesting textiles and textures when I get back to my studio. So yeah, I'm just gonna throw myself into the scene. Very good. Um, you, um, you get a visit from... Um, Laskin during the you know the first you know few hours on the train he kind of appears from one of the carriages kind of sits down amongst uh, you know uh, Maxime Francis and Georgina um, and um, he, he he says that um, Popoff has asked for additional OGPU men to uh, to be available in Moscow. Um, I, although I did not tell him to think he is, I wonder if he is not right that you are busy with other things too. He kind of knowingly looks at you. Is he right? Is there something I can help with? Well, maybe we are, but we are allowed to spend our own time doing our own things, are we not? Oh, yeah, yeah, you misunderstand me. You misunderstand me. I am... I am not like Popoff, you understand? I, I see friends who may need help in a strange land, and... If I can be of help, then I simply leave that with you. Oh, that's not quite where I thought he was going. <laughs> <laughs> I see friends. Oh, no, not quite. OK. Um, you can make some just... control if oh, you wish. Go on, go on. Might as well. I'm, I'm seeing him wanting to join the entourage. Oh, yes. No, no, no. I, I take that entirely the wrong way. Yes, I, so... I, I do the psychology thing. Yes, you, you can help by telling Popoff to get rid of these extra OGPU. That was precisely the opposite of why we complained to you. Um, yes, I understand. I, I understand. I will do my best. Um, but please be aware Popoff is, as you say, very efficient. <laughs> and uh, Well, just uh, remind it, him of my heritage, will you? Because I was deeply insulted by those OGPU attempting to steal a watch that my mother gave me for my 18th bloody birthday. Yes, I understand, I understand. Uh, let me say this, I, I will try my best to to keep Popoff from, his nose from where it should not be, if I say that right. And 
I, I will, I understand you, there are things other than this tour that you, uh, meetings, disappearing to meetings and so forth, and you, you may need discretion at these times. Well, discretion perhaps, but more just not attracting attention. Yes. What, does, what does my psychology role tell me about all of this? Is, is he a really devious little piece of work or is he genuinely trying to help us? You get the sense. You don't really understand why, but he, he seems very genuine. He seems, you detect that he doesn't like Popoff when he mentions his name and you, you get the sense there isn't really any subterfuge on his part that, you know, this... This is on the level. He's kind of saying, I know you're up to something. I don't know what it is, but I'm, 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 I will help you because I think you are good people, is what you kind of get the impression of. Mm -hmm. um, where how far that will stretch and what, you know, how that gets translated is another matter. But you do get that sense that he is genuinely offered to offering to be of help um, um well i shall smile at him and and tell him the truth you know that his offer is genuinely appreciated and should we need his help we will call on him this i'll, I'll sort of just add a little bit confused we, we, we're very we have met some charming people and made some wonderful friends while we have been staying just in these few days and it's been very distressing to have those friends attacked simply for being with us yes it is it, it is a uncertain times and, and things bad things can happen and i would do my best to steer you away from these things if i can help it but the more you can share with me, the more I can help you understand. I, I'm not asking you to tell me all your secrets, but but um, I will do my best to keep pop keep Popoff's eye elsewhere where I can. Thank you, Mr. Laskin. We certainly would hate for any of our our new friends to come to harm through something that we had done or inadvertently caused trouble in any way yes okay um while you're on the train um you um at various times um francis you see uncle harry um in you know down the end of the carriage mm -hmm. um sort of smiling sat on the chair just walking kind of falling asleep a little bit when you kind of go over to him he's kind of he's, he's kind of gone by the time you get there so but you see him a couple of times in this you know different chairs but similarly as if you know as if he's around kind of thing and um you um maxim again you you also uh you see edward similarly kind of but, but maybe from from an open door through another carriage you see him wave a nod kind of thing you know it's like these they're here traveling with you it's kind of a bit strange and and um um but it's not it's more comforting than than mm. weird so i'm not making real sanity but it but clearly you know there's a bit of surprise when you see them initially and then kind of you readjust um and um perhaps um i think um ed no not edward um where oh i've lost you i've lost Georgina's sheet, hang on. Robert. Robert. Uh, Robert um, perhaps comes by and uh, and says, um, this, every time I'm here, it still seems so strange, yet yet so, so very right. Don't you agree? Yes, I do. And we, we are working on a way for you to be here permanently. Yes, the, the, the call is the, to call, to call the power that calls us, it brings us together. 
but so that you it, won't have to leave ever again. But you understand it isn't right, don't you? You understand this; it can't happen. It it isn't meant to be. This is this is wrong. As much as it, as much as we may want it to be right, it, it, it isn't right, is it? It kind of, you know, it, it, tears start to fall oh, down his God. eyes. But how I don't. I can't lose you again. He says, uh, I, I, I understand, but I can only tell you what is. And with that, after a kind of a, a, a an emotional kind of hug, and um, you hear a noise and turn, and he's he's faded away in your arms, kind of thing. So you, <sighs> You then make a sanity roll because it's all a bit too much, I'm afraid. Oh, and I'm not allowed to join the cultists after all. <laughs> oh, that's a spectacular fail. Okay, so you lose one point. Oh, we're dropping like flies now. Um, meanwhile, um, Eleanor and Oksana have been working on this translation and um, it's going really well. It's taking time. Um, this is about six hours in. Um, Oksana thinks, you know, maybe another another hour or so, and we'll have this completely cracked. Um, but around that point, um, Eleanor, this um, this um, it's like a well, it's you, you describe him. If he's on a London street, like a tramp, this kind of is a middle aged, clearly Russian. Um, tall in this kind of you know scruffed up suit no coat no tie um and he, he kind of stumbles you know along the carriage you haven't seen him in the carriage he appears to have come from another carriage walking all the way down it you kind of notice him and you know then you just catch you keep catching his eyes he comes closer and closer so as he, he gets quite close i i put a newspaper over the bit of paper we're working on and um and, and get out my phrase book and I, I make out that Octana's helping me with my Russian. Yeah, yeah. He, he doesn't he, he doesn't sort of really look towards you. He, he seems to be looking towards Oksana and um, he kind of stumbles over and, and about, <coughs> about two feet away, he kind of stops and points at Oksana and says, do, do your work, girl. Finish your work. This is in Russian. Could you make a psychology role, Elena? That is a hard pass. Your initial impression is this guy is manic. Uh, Oksana immediately responds with, sir, I, I do not know you. And he, he, he kind of comes forward and raises his voice, shouting, okay. call him, call him. I Shaking his finger at her. And at the paper underneath, well, you know, at the paper you covered the... Okay, I'm going to do a really loud wolf whistle, you know, fingers in the mouth type <laughs> wolf whistle that kind of pierces through the carriage. Okay. Um, oh, right, um, I'm looking to see where that's coming from. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Can I have a listen roll? Uh, I'm going to give you a bonus die, but um, oh, if you spectacularly fail this. Let me get my bonus die out. Hear it over the uh, the Balaraki or whatever is playing. <laughs> uh, 25. Now my listen is 20. I am prepared to spend that five points of luck. Well, that's entirely your choice. Yes, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, you hear this whistle come from the other end of the carriage. Oh, At bye. this point, Elena, uh, this, oh. old, this, this fella is is reaching over to, you know, he's coming over to Oksana like this. Control yourself, Mr. Krylov, I say, taking a stab in the dark. <laughs> certainly can't stab him. <laughs> no, but I probably is, can. Yeah, Francis can. <laughs> is it a, are you, are you kind of a batter aside or a slap away? I, I, a, I slap what, at his hand. You slap at his hand in a, in a, in a, Pathetic way. <laughs> Pathetic way. Okay, so I'm not going to make you make a roll. It's just a slap away. Okay. You kind of slap away. It just hits his hand, which is firm, right, like rock. 
uh, as Francis, you're running over. I'm I'm striding purposefully over and going. Okay, can I have a dex roll then? Because <laughs> it's a very crowded. Uh, there's baskets and food and chickens. Ugh, chickens. No, because my dex is crap. Oh no, you might spend some luck. Oh no, no, no! I'm not spending that much luck. <laughs> So nice you, try. You, guys, you, you stumble a bit. You don't further fall over. But you stumble a bit, and you are delayed slightly mm. as this guy grabs Oxana's shoulder, both hands on, her, and sort of looks into her face and says, "She must finish it. Call him." And he starts start to shake her, which is actually quite more violent than than it really needs to be. But he's being very violent. Uh, Eleanor, you're right there. Are you doing anything else at this point? Um. I'm going to try hitting him with my notepad. <laughs> okay, you <laughs> ineffectually hit him with his notepad. His which probably himself. buys just a bit of time for Francis to finally get here as he's kind of almost lifting Oksana out of the sheet, she, uh, seat and she's kind of like screaming into his face, let me go, you idiot! As, as uh, he's, sort of, he's just shouting, call him! Call him now! Right, hand on shoulder... Uh, excuse me, sir, but there's absolutely no need for that. Please unhand the young lady. He is not paying you any attention. Oh, deck him one then. Okay. It's just not um, acceptable behaviour. Give me a, uh, a a brawl roll then in that case. I think a light tap on the back of the noggin with the truncheon. <laughs> oh, I say. I am actually trying to knock him out, not kill him. I understand. <laughs> yeah, no, and I definitely am not spending that much luck. Um, <laughs> that would miss? be a no. I missed. <laughs> so, so yeah, as he as you go to hit, he kind of moves moves direction slightly, and you just kind of hit air. Um, he um, he um, he, uh, he he's just ranting, and that you see the other you know Russian uh, people in the in the carriage kind of all now staring you know in his his and your direction um and you see a couple of the more burly types who uh maybe one of the instrument players and a friend kind of like putting down their instruments with purpose and sort of standing up to sort of come and deal with this situation but francis you have uh yet one more moment to do something uh before they <laughs> arrive moment to shine yes let's try this <laughs> Well, I can tell you now that's that's a no. <laughs> okay, as you, as you kind obviously of, the train is moving too much. You, you, for me yeah, to... this time you kind of like you know battering him in the back, you know, repeatedly with his truncheon. It doesn't seem to be doing anything. He's just not feeling it, and um, uh, uh, and um, <laughs> these two you know guys come kind of like brush by you, put their hands on his shoulders, and he just fades into nothingness. Ooh. Could I have a sanity roll? <sighs> Here we go. Um, oh, God. <laughs> oh, I am not. doing fine. Yay! <laughs> that's, that's the one I really need Piece to Piece of cake. As is Oksana. Dribble, he's dribble, more, dribble. He's more livid than frightened, I'm afraid. How did you do, Vanilla? I, I, I apparently am dribbling. I failed that. Roll. Oh, you failed. Okay, so um, it's just a point. Hmm. Just a point that I've lost. Joint lowest in the party. <laughs> <laughs> and Georgina, how did you do? Oh, did you want me to do one? I hadn't well, really noticed what was going on. I was too busy being sad about Robert, I thought. Oh, okay, yeah, that's. I will go with that. It's yeah, right, okay. you know, I'm yeah, sort of yeah. listening to the sad balalaika music now. And um, Yeah, okay, okay, and, that's. Yeah. I'll, I'll go with that. That sounds fine. Um, yeah, this guy just visit, just disappears like a, like a visitor. Um, and, um, you know, his, his, his chant of finish it, call him, call him ringing in your ears. Um, Oksana, as I say, is more livid, but calms quite quickly, sort of shouting, it, just drink talking, drink talking, he's gone gone now. And she kind of, he's gone now, kind of semi-pointing to the next carriage, but turns to look at, you know, uh, Eleanor with a kind of like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? 
um, <laughs> and and says um, very quietly to Eleanor once things have gone back to normal. What was that about? You know, you know, I saw it in your eyes. I saw it. Tell me everything. What has it got to do with this? Oh, um, do you believe in witchcraft? Well, I could be persuaded. Okay. Does that man just disappeared? Was he a ghost? I, I, I'm not quite a witch. Um, right. I don't understand. <laughs> this, she's going on about this translation. She's saying, "Look, it says this. It says about cults and German cults and yes, the Book of the Dead." Oh joy! In Greek. Um, oh. Oh Lord. This, this, this is all connected. You. you yes. Uh, yes. We, we we need to have, have you, a bit of a remember chat. Remember when I asked you if you lost somebody you love? Yes. What if, what if you could see them again and talk to them? Just stares at you, horrified. What, what if they, what if they weren't dead? What if no one had to die? What if, what if we made heaven a place that we could actually share with the people in it? She kind what of if looks, we made earth into heaven? Bizarrely, and and. Uh... And the penny starts to sink in a bit, and she makes a sanity roll. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she sort of lets out a kind of a gasp and loses a point of sanity, and um, and sort of nods her head very slowly. Clearly, she doesn't have an idea of what you're talking about and doesn't really understand. But she kind of gets your drift, especially after she's translated about half of this stuff, and. Um, she says, let us finish the translation, then we will talk more. Yes, come on, let's. Yes, that's okay. probably a good idea. And and um, and with that, um, we will draw this to a close, other than to say, um, for the, for, well, for all of you, well, this is kind of delayed effect for Eleanor, because this will happen after the translation is finished and hopefully before the end of the journey. But for the rest of you who are relaxing, enjoying yourselves on the train to some degree, once you know you are on there a uh, considerably long time, um, you, uh, uh, let me see. Okay, so um, you'll get a sanity point for befriending Oksana. And um, you um, you also get um, one d four sanity points for um, getting to uh, speak with Golovin and um, getting the answer from him and comprehending some of what the hell he was going on about. <laughs> and um, you also. Uh, uh, at this point can also do your skill checks and check whether you've increased any skills and um, you can do that obviously um, uh, between the sessions ready for next time when we kick off uh, with the end of the the train journey uh, but that's it for tonight and uh, we will see you all again next week same time and same twitch channel and um, thanks for playing, everyone. And thanks for watching, everyone else. So see Night, you. Night, everyone. See you bye soon. Bye-bye. Take care.